Welcome to a journey through the archives of history, where the peculiar and the extraordinary converge in a tapestry of fascinating stories. In this exploration of the past, we'll unravel the enigmatic tales that often escape the pages of conventional history books. Brace yourself for a nuanced glimpse into the bizarre, the unexpected, and the lesser known facets of our collective human narrative. The War of the Oaken Bucket, also known as the War of the Bucket or the Battle of Zappolino, was a conflict that unfolded on November 15, 1325, near the town of Zappolino in the Emilia-Romana region of northern Italy. This war is a testament to the intricate and often peculiar dynamics characterizing the political landscape of medieval Italian city-states. The origins of the conflict lie in a raid carried out by Modernese soldiers on the city of Bologna. In the course of this raid, the Modernese managed to seize a seemingly inconspicuous yet symbolically significant item, a wooden bucket taken from a well. The Bolognese, incensed by this act and the humiliation it represented, were determined to reclaim the stolen bucket and restore their honor. In response to the raid, Bologna swiftly mobilized its forces, assembling an army to march against Modena. The stage was set for a confrontation that would go down in history as the Battle of Zappolino. On the fateful day, 1325, the two rival city-states clashed in a military engagement that ultimately saw the Modernese emerge victorious. The wooden bucket, now imbued with a peculiar historical significance, was seized by the Modernese and brought back to their city as a prized trophy. It became a tangible symbol of their triumph over Bologna and a source of local pride. The War of the Oaken Bucket, while a relatively minor and localized conflict in the grander scheme of medieval warfare, serves as an illustrative example of the often intricate and sometimes petty nature of the feuds and rivalries that characterized Italian city-states during this period. The Dancing Plague of 1518 was a mysterious and bizarre event that took place in Strasbourg, a city in the Holy Roman Empire now part of modern-day France. In the summer of 1518, it involved a large number of people who were afflicted with a compulsion to dance uncontrollably in the streets for days on end. This unusual phenomenon is often cited as one of the earliest and most documented cases of mass hysteria. The outbreak began with a woman named Fro Trophie who started dancing fervently in the streets of Strasbourg in July 1518. Her dancing continued for hours and soon, others in the community began to join her. The number of dancers grew steadily, and within a month, hundreds of people were caught up in this strange and frenzied dance. Contemporary accounts describe the dancers as being in a state of trance, unable to control their movements, and driven by an irresistible urge to dance. The situation became so concerning that civic and religious authorities took notice. Instead of trying to halt the dancing, some officials even set up stages and hired musicians thinking that encouraging more dancing might help alleviate the condition. However, the dancing did not abate, and the participants began to suffer from exhaustion, dehydration, and in some cases, heart attacks. Several individuals reportedly died as a result of the relentless dancing. The cause of the dancing plague remains a subject of historical speculation. Various theories have been proposed, including ergot poisoning, a fungal infection of rye grain that can cause hallucinations and spasms. Other explanations include stress-induced hysteria, cultural and social factors, and psychogenic movement disorders. Despite the lack of a conclusive explanation, the Dancing Plague of 1518 remains a fascinating and enigmatic episode in history, shedding light on the complexities of human behavior and the potential for mass psychological phenomena. It serves as a reminder of the mysteries that still surround certain historical events and the challenges of interpreting them from a modern perspective. In the charming tale of the Republic of Cospea, the birth of this accidental nation reads like a script from a historical sitcom. It's the 15th century, and the Papal States and the Grand Duchy of Tuscany are trying to settle a border dispute. But lo and behold, bureaucracy and negotiation delays turn a sleepy, 
forgotten piece of land called Cospire into the unintended star of its own political comedy. As the powers that be bickered over maps and treaties, the folks in Cospire seizing the opportunity like true renaissance rebels, scratched their heads and thought, hey, no one seems to be in charge here. Why not declare independence and have our own republic? And just like that, with a stroke of unwitting bureaucratic genius, the Republic of Cospire was born just like that, with no one bothering to contest it. Cospire became the quirkiest independent state in Italy. Its founding fathers were probably just a bunch of villagers sipping wine, shrugging their shoulders and deciding to run their own show, a mayor chosen based on the ability to tell the funniest jokes and national decisions made during boisterous town hall meetings filled with laughter. Their diplomatic relations probably consisted of friendly exchanges of local cheese and wine with neighboring territories. Alas, the accidental republic met its end when the grown-ups finally noticed what was going on. In 1826, Cospaya's days of whimsical independence came to an end, as it was divvied up between the Papal States and Tuscany, but for a brief and shining moment in history, the Republic of Cospaya proved that sometimes Nations are born not out of grand ideals, but from the unintentional hilarity of bureaucratic blunders. In the early 17th century, the Netherlands experienced a phenomenon that would come to be known as tulip mania, a captivating tale of economic excess and human folly. It was a time when tulips, originally imported from the Ottoman Empire, became the object of intense fascination and speculative frenzy. The story begins in the bustling markets of Amsterdam, where the allure of the tulip flower captured the imagination of the Dutch elite. The tulip, with its vibrant colors and intricate petals, quickly rose to prominence as a status symbol coveted by the affluent and fashionable. What started as a simple appreciation for the beauty of tulips soon transformed into a speculative craze. Tulip bulbs, rare and exotic varieties in particular, became highly sought after, and their prices skyrocketed. The demand for these precious bulbs reached unprecedented levels, with individuals from all walks of life eager to invest in this growing market. The frenzy reached its zenith in the winter of 1637, when bulb prices soared to astronomical heights. Tulip bulbs were traded not only in florist shops, but also in taverns and on the bustling streets of Amsterdam. The allure of quick wealth proved irresistible as people mortgaged their homes and possessions to partake in the speculative madness. At the height of tulip mania, fortunes were made and lost overnight. Prices for single tulip bulbs reached exorbitant levels, equivalent to the cost of luxurious homes or even entire estates. The craze became so pervasive that a futures market for tulip bulbs emerged allowing traders to buy and sell contracts for bulbs that had not yet been harvested. However, the bubble eventually burst. In early 1637, the market for tulip bulbs collapsed, leaving many investors in financial ruin. The once inflated prices plummeted and the speculative fervor gave way to a harsh economic reality. The aftermath of tulip mania had a lasting impact on the Dutch economy, leading to a period of economic downturn and financial instability. The tulip, once a symbol of prosperity and wealth, became a cautionary tale of the dangers of speculative excess. The events of tulip mania serve as a timeless reminder of the delicate balance between fascination and folly in the intricate dance of human behavior and economic forces. As we conclude our expedition through the labyrinthine corridors of history, we find ourselves enriched by the tapestry of peculiarities that time has woven. These bizarre historical facts, like hidden gems in the archives of antiquity, not only entertain but also serve as portals to understanding the mysterious nature of our shared past. Be sure to let us know if you had already known about some of these facts and which one shocked you the most. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And with that, we bid you goodbye until the next adventure.